Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 5th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. I had my nocturnal flight call microphone running last night and it picked up several migrating Virginia rails and an American bittern, so Kim and I started the morning by going down to Sage Creek Marsh to listen for marsh birds. All we had was a few ducks though, no rails, no bitterns, but soon enough they'll be in there. Lake Ontario had good numbers of red-breasted mergansers and a few long-tailed ducks and one common loon, but not too much otherwise. It was another day of changing weather. The winds today were moderate to strong out of the southeast the whole day, so it was a good wind direction and a good wind speed as well. But for the first few hours of the day, it was very drizzly with some periods of heavier rain. Finally, by the late morning, it had cleared up to just a simply overcast sky and we were getting a little bit of activity. And then in the early afternoon, the sun actually came out for about an hour and then afterwards it stayed bright. So we had a few hours of good migration before some more rain showers shut the flight down. And then once that rain passed, there wasn't really any raptor activity that got back up except two final raptors. Despite the rain in the morning, there were still a few raptors pushing through, including a few harriers and a merlin and a few of these. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. And of course, the water birds don't mind the rain so much. Here we have a belted kingfisher. Here we have a migrating common loon, one of 21 that we saw today. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross with a long tail, a large head, and wings held out mostly straight. We can see that this bird has a brown head and a light underside with brown teardrop streaking that's mainly concentrated to the upper breast. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. It was around 1 o'clock that finally it started to clear up and we had blue sky for about an hour and that was enough to generate some thermals and get some more raptors moving. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings, a small falcon, and it's light colored underneath. This is an American kestrel. Here we have a small excipiter, and we see that it's bluish on top, so we know it's an adult compared to the juveniles, which are more brown on top. And when you have a topside view to tell Cooper's hawk from sharp shinned hawk, one thing you can look at is the capped appearance versus hooded appearance. So we see on this bird that dark on top of the head continues unbroken all the way onto the back of the bird, making this a sharp shinned hawk. And we also see that very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings, a small falcon, but this one has a lot of dark streaking underneath. And we see a dark tail with some white bands. This is a Merlin. Here we have a beautiful bird that's a raspberry color overall. We don't really see any streaking to the breast. And if we look at the bill, we see that this line of the top of the bill is a straight line rather than curved. These are all good field marks for a male purple finch. Here we have another small occipiter. This is another adult sharp-shinned hawk. Looking at that head, it's a small head with kind of a bug-eyed appearance. We see this bird actually has a full crop, that which is this bulge here, which means it has eaten recently. So it kind of gives it a weird posture with this bulge here and then the head sticking out at an angle. Again, we see that all the tail feathers are pretty much the same length, giving it a squared off tip. Although with the tail completely tucked like that, you have to be a little bit careful, but just a really small exhibitor. And we have a lot of these sharp shins migrating recently. There was enough lift to get some of the big birds up. Here we have an eagle. We see a relatively small head with a golden nape, and we see three points of white. So there's white in the center of each wing and at the base of the tail. Those are all good field marks for golden eagle. And about 10 minutes after that first golden eagle, we had a second golden eagle. Again, note how small the head looks in comparison to the tail. And again, on this bird, we see some white patches in the wings and a white tail base. So this is another subadult golden eagle. Here we have a buteo. We see a belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk. And that dark trailing edge and the red tail indicate that it is an adult. And then I spotted this bird out in the distance and I could tell it was a relatively large raptor with a long tail. So I knew it was either a Cooper's hawk or an American goshawk. And as it got closer and dipped down a little bit, it showed the top side like this. And I could see all of this modeling, which is something that Cooper's hawk doesn't normally show, but American goshawk does. We watched it come in and it ended up making a really low pass just at the edge of the field that we were standing in. And taking a look at this photo, we see a white line above the eye. 
I think you call that a white supercilium. If we look at the streaking underneath, it's very heavily marked underneath, including all the way down to the undertail coverts. And we see wavy, irregular tail bands. This is an American goshawk, and this is the juvenile plumage. This is probably my favorite photo from the whole sequence. Remember that American goshawks are the larger cousin of the Cooper's hawk. They were formerly in the Accipiter genus along with the sharp-shinned hawk, but the Cooper's hawk and American goshawk have been moved to a different genus called Aster. And really, goshawks are built almost more like beautios. They're just so big and bulky, and I think this photo shows that really well. You can see it's got kind of a small head in proportion to the rest of its body. And look how broad these wings are. Just massive wings on this bird. And this angle, look how wide this tail looks. It has very different proportions from a Cooper's hawk. A Cooper's hawk looks kind of like a flying cross with a large head and somewhat narrow wings and a very long tail. Goshawks just look so big and bulky and this one gave us an excellent look. And as it flashed the top side here, look at all this modeling that you have on the top side. And again, Cooper's hawks are usually plain brown on top in the juvenile plumage. So when you see this much modeling to the top side, that's a good indication that it's an American goshawk. Here it is passing just over our number nine sign, an unbelievable low pass. And goshawks are a species that used to be relatively common to see at Derby Hill in migration, but in recent years they've become extremely scarce. So everyone we see is really special. We had an adult American goshawk back at the beginning of the season, and this was the first juvenile of the season, but you really never know how many more you're going to get, so it's important to enjoy every one, and this one gave us a terrific look. Sometimes there's a lot of debate about was it a goshawk, wasn't it a goshawk, but when they come in and make a nice pass like this, it gave us a nice long look, it gave great photo opportunities, and so just a really special moment for everyone that was out at the Hawk Watch today. And of course, being a hawk of the forest, it had no problem navigating its way through some of the trees. Here we have another beautio with a dark belly band and dark patagio bars. This is another adult red-tailed hawk, and this one's pretty heavily marked, I would say. This is probably from the northern subspecies. Here's a bird that you could certainly mistake for a juvenile northern goshawk because they look very similar, although this is actually a beautio. And if we look at the tail, we see it's a different tail banding with these very thin tail bands. And looking towards the wingtip, we see a very squared off or blunt wingtip, and maybe we get a hint of some pale crescents because this is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, and this one came really low overhead, and it was the only red shoulder of the day. Here we have a large, lanky, black and white raptor. This is an osprey. With the sun coming out and those favorable southeasterly winds, we had a flight of a couple hundred turkey vultures today. Here we see the very pointed wings of a small falcon. It's blue on top. This is a merlin. Here we have a large white wading bird. This was our second great egret of the season. Here we have another red-tailed hawk, but this one's fairly lightly marked. We see kind of a faint belly band and faint patagio bars, and this is a juvenile, so it only has a very faint trailing edge to the wings, not that bold trailing edge that the adults show, and if we had a better look at the tail, it would be more plain brown with some banding. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross. We see a large head, a long tail. Looking at the head, we see a capped appearance with the dark blue, but then it stops and we have a pale nape. Looking at the tail, we have shorter outer tail feathers giving the tail a rounded appearance, and we have orange barring underneath that indicates that this is an adult Cooper's hawk. And looking at the overall proportions of this bird, we see that it's quite different than that goshawk. The goshawk looked like it had a small head, very broad wings, and just very bulky overall with a wide tail. Cooper's hawks just look a little bit skinnier overall, not as bulky as that goshawk looked. And why not make it a hat trick? Here was our third golden eagle of the day. You can see that small headed appearance with the long tail and white in each wing and at the base of the tail. This was another subadult golden eagle. We had goshawk and we had golden eagle, so we may as well have one of these too. Here we have a beautio with a black and white appearance, kind of long, slender, skinny wings that are somewhat pointed. This is a rough-legged hawk, and looking at the plumage, we see it has a bibbed appearance, which is indicative of an adult male rough-legged hawk. 
Here we have the top side of a raptor. We see a long tail and long skinny pointed wings, and we see a white rump and an owl-like facial disc. This is an adult male northern harrier. And here's the underside of that same adult male northern harrier. You can see the head is gray, but otherwise underneath it's mostly white with black wingtips and a black trailing edge to the secondaries. After that final rain shower in the afternoon, the flight never really picked back up. I did have one more light morph rough-legged hawk that was too distant for photos. And then this was the last raptor of the day. This is a small dark falcon zipping overhead, almost gone before it got there. This is another Merlin. Taking a look at the eBird list, today we had 63 species. The only new species for the season was a winter wren that was down near Sage Creek Marsh, bringing us to a total of 107 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 240 turkey vultures, 3 ospreys, 4 bald eagles, 7 northern harriers. We had 79 sharp-shinned hawks, 4 cooper's hawks, and 1 American goshawk. For beautios, we had 1 red-shouldered hawk, 49 red-tailed hawks, and 2 rough-legged hawks. We had 3 golden eagles, and for falcons, we had seven American kestrels and five merlins for a total of 405 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 6,062 and the season total to 24,365. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy early and then partial clearing later with the high in the low 40s and winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Westerly winds are a toss up, but usually mean the south lookout. So that's where I'll expect to be. And I would expect light to moderate migration, probably similar to other recent days at the south lookout um, with a moderate turkey vulture flight and small numbers of other raptors mixed in. But the flight line can be a bit spread out at times. So sometimes the birds are right overhead. Sometimes they're more off to the side. Just depends where things settle in with those winds. For Monday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s and light westerly winds. So probably south lookout again and again, light to moderate migration. And Tuesday's not looking good. It's windy with morning snow showers and temperatures in the low to mid 30s. West northwest winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So would not expect much migration for Tuesday. All right, well, the day didn't start out so good with it being so rainy, but we had the right winds and we were lucky and it cleared up in the afternoon for us and we ended up with a decent flight for about two and a half hours and in that time we had some really great birds with those three golden eagles, a couple rough-legged hawks, and especially that juvenile American goss hawk which gave us a stunning look. So great day to be out at the hawk watch and sometimes it's a surprise like that. You don't expect it to be a good day because of the forecast and it clears up just long enough to get a good flight. Hope you can make it out soon to Derby Hill. From LEGO Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.